Nagraj collapsed and died on the spot, but Varalakshmi survived. Sitama started shouting for help. Both Nagraj and Varalakshmi were immediately rushed to the nearby Wims Hospital. Actually, spotlight at the end, but our other one took the ambulance on our tent and do a Yuru Yaru on a thingy. I can know you know hospital get much. But a doctor brought it and tether Yaru Nagaraj. Worldly condition no out of danger is it? Yesterday, our Gundu body will get three hours so only in a medical officer somebody. Three hours after somebody, they have removed that uh, bullet. Now, as per doctor opinion, she is out of danger. In the fight, Prasad was injured as well. He fled the scene after committing the crime. The irony is that cops who catch absconding criminals now had to apprehend an absconding cop. At the hospital, Sita Ma had both good news and bad news. Good news was that her daughter Varalakshmi survived, but she lost her son Nagraj. Anita Prasad broke down as soon as she heard about her husband's death. <laughs> Doctors operated on Varalakshmi and removed the bullet in her abdomen. She's now kept under observation in the ICU. The cop turned murderer Prasad surrendered the next morning at Gandhinagar police station. It's tragic that an efficient cop who should have upheld the law ended up breaking it. Basavraj Harnahalli, News 9, Bellari. A shootout took place at Maleshwaram on the night of 14th August. When the incident came to light, all the residents of the locality were shocked out of their wits. It was indeed a rare scene to witness for the locals. Who was it the cop shot at? What had he done? We'll tell you. This is the majestic area Namma Bengaluru, which is one of the most crowded areas across the city. A small incident takes place here and a crowd of thousands gather in no time. On this fateful day, a shocking incident took place at Cotton Pit in the majestic area. Amal Ram, a businessman, came running to Cotton Pit police station. He was restless and looked panicked. His son had been kidnapped and he wanted the cops to help him find his darling son. A constable took Amal into Inspector Sunil Kumar's chamber. Inspector Sunil first calmed Amal down and took his statement. He wanted to know what exactly had transpired so he could help him find his son. Amal told Inspector Sunil that his son Mohit and his daughter Tamanna were students of Venus International School in Rajaji Nagar. On the fateful day, his children, as usual, were dropped off near the temple on the cotton paid main road. While they were walking, two men arrived on a bike, came to Mohit, lured him with a chocolate and rode away in a jiffy. Tamanna panicked, ran home and told her mother about what took place on that fateful evening. Amal, who was at a shop in Chickpate, received a call. He immediately stepped out and started to look for his son all around the area, but in vain. In no time, Amal received a call from an unknown number. As soon as he answered it, he was in for a shocker. It was one of the men who had kidnapped his son. 
He demanded a ransom of 30 lakh rupees and threatened to kill Mohit if Amal didn't give him the money. The kidnapper warned Amal not to approach the cops. He said that if he went to the cops, he would be certain about having his son's dead body parcel back to him. However, Amal trusted the system. He trusted Inspector Sunil Kumar and he approached him for help. It was a six-year-old whose life was in danger at that time and Sunil Kumar could not have taken this case lightly. He immediately called DCB Laburam and informed him about this particular case. The DCB immediately rushed to the Cotton Bay police station and took charge of the situation. All the senior police officials were called to the police station because the DCP was on his way. A team led by Inspector Sunil Kumar was formed right away to work on this case of kidnap. There were two other teams which were formed to work on the same case because they wanted fast results. Cotton Paid Main Road is one busy, bustling street. That the kidnappers managed to kidnap Mohit from there was quite a surprise for the cops as well. They had to track this case by hook or crook. They took it up as a challenge and went to work. The kidnapper was calling Amal once every 20 minutes asking him if the money was arranged for or not. Little did he know that Amal was with the cops and that his calls were being traced. In the meantime, cops interrogated Mohit's sister, Tamanna, to gather more details. Tamanna told the cops that one of the men was wearing a blue shirt and a black pant. However, he had no clue about how the other man looked. She had not seen him. By the time she could shout out for her brother, Mohit, they had taken him and ridden away. There was an interesting clue that Tamanna gave to the cops. She told them that the kidnappers called out to Mohit with his pet name, Vikas. The cops immediately understood that it was someone known to the family who committed the crime or played a major role in it. The cops now had more pressure on them. They knew that people familiar to the family were the kidnappers. They would not think twice to kill Mohit because if Amal delayed giving them the money, they would fear being identified and would claim the innocent child's life. The cops had traced the number of kidnapper already. When they extracted the address, they were shocked to learn that the SIM card was purchased just a week ago. What surprised them more was that the number was registered with a fake address. The kidnappers would switch off their phones as soon as they were done talking to Amal. When they checked the call logs of this particular number, they learned that the kidnappers were roaming around at Rajajinagar and Maleswaram. Two hours had passed by since the kidnappers first called Amal. Every time they called him, he told them that he arranged a part of the amount and was trying to arrange for the rest. He pleaded with them for more time and they kept threatening him. When the kidnappers called Amal for the last time and asked him how much money he managed to arrange, he told them that he managed to accumulate 10 lakh rupees. He was informed to take his two-wheeler and come to Mantri Mall in Maleswaram. The cops had a strenuous task at hand, but they had to succeed. They had three hours' time in hand and they were well prepared. They decided to send Amal by himself with the money. He asked him to call the kidnappers and tell him that he could not come on the bike because it was raining. The cops packed a suitcase full of fake notes and handed it over to Amal. The auto rickshaw was hired by the cops and it was a cop who dressed as a rickshaw driver who took Amal to the spot. The time had arrived and the plan was put to action. Amal was taken to Mantri Mall. The other inspectors were following the rickshaw in Mafti. Inspector Sunil's team was on the lookout for the kidnappers on the streets. The cops were trying to locate the kidnappers through the tar location. Amal's mobile rang and the kidnappers informed him to come to Devaya Park. Amal headed towards Devaya Park and the kidnappers location was traced to Harish Chandragat. When Amal reached Devaya Park, he was called to Harish Chandragat. The cops had surrounded Harish Chandragat already. They heard a child crying. 
They knew that the child was there. They barged in together. The kidnappers learned of other people having accompanied Amal. They attacked two of the police personnel with knives and tried to flee. One of the police personnel smartly picked Mohit up and came out of Harish Chandragat. Then the cops asked the kidnappers to surrender, but the kidnappers tried to retaliate instead. The cops had no option left but to shoot at the kidnappers in their legs. As soon as they suffered bullet injuries, the kidnappers fell to the ground. The cops then took the duo into custody and shifted them to the hospital. The two police personnel who were also injured in the task were shifted to the hospital. It took 4 hours to complete the task. They not only saved Mohit but also arrested the accused duo as well. It was one successful operation. They were now curious to know the identity of the arrested persons. The accused duo was identified as Dharmaram and Jitendra Ram, both hailing from Rajasthan. Amal knew both of them personally. Dharmaram worked for Amal 8 months ago. He fought with Amal and Amal threw him out of the job. After losing his job, Dharmaram went back to Rajasthan. When he returned to Bengaluru with his friend Jitendra Ram, he came back with a plan in mind. He wanted to seek revenge for the insult he had to bear. He wanted to take all of Amal's money and have a shop of his own. He planned to kidnap Amal's son Mohit. He knew that he would make a lot of money. He then started tracing all of Mohit's movements so he could decide on a particular day to put his plan to action. The kidnap went as he planned, but unfortunately, his dream remained a dream. Kiran for News 9, Bengaluru.